Well, good day. This is Bill Griffith again, and we're continuing our wildlife painting. This is basically part three or video three of the series. Uh, the last video, video two, uh, we covered basically some of the blocking in and setting up our mountains and uh, just making sure our composition is what we want. Now, I hope you've had time to kind of take a look at it. And if you're like me, you constantly make changes. And video three, which follows, basically details some of the changes I'm making to the mountains. Um, and really is to try to emphasize the depth of field, uh, the mountains that are further away, the grassland up closer, and that's where I apply some of the things we talked about before, including light tones, dark tones, edges, um, warm colors, and cool colors. So I enjoy, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, please subscribe and welcome aboard. Okay, the first thing I want to do is correct a little um, dip perception here. Uh, after looking at what I created the first part of this video, these mountains and these mountains, they're both about the same tone values, so uh, that's not what I want because this mountain is further back and, even, and this mountain's even further back. So I need to correct some of this right in here. And that's what I'm gonna do in this part here. And then I'm also thinking uh, that this particular side of the mountain and this one over here too, I'd like to make more um, tree covered, kind of like, uh, you know, pine trees, that kind of thing. So again, you always have an option to change out this painting as you go along and that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of uh, lighten up this brown that's on these two mountains here in the front. And that's this one here and that one here. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna knock this down. Cause it's, uh, I don't want that that dark. So already it falls back to the back a little bit. And then this one here definitely, this is the one that I practiced with the palette knife on a little bit. Uh, so again, it's one that needs to be knocked down. Not quite so. Um, dark. So I'm going to be adding and basically what I'm doing right now is just a little mix of titanium uh, white and the um, ultramarine blue because that's really what I want here in the back. So I'm going to come on down and I'm kind of knocking these down a little bit, making them further back. This one definitely, this is really too dark. Notice how already they're beginning to kind of fall to the, to the rear of this forward mountain a little bit. And I'm going to continue that because the blue shows through not only because of the snow, but also the daylight that uh, sunlight that's coming down through there and the atmospheric effects of the air on those these mountains that are further back in here. So I've taken care of that. up in here and do the same thing here trying to get rid of this and now the question is this one right in here do I want it far, kind of forward or do I want it to fall back I think in this particular case I want to keep it going back I want these two areas here to be the forward mountains so I'm going to bring this one down too a little bit 
Notice I'm taking a lot of the brown color out and replacing it with the blue again. That's your atmosphere effects and the snow. A little bit of blue back up in here. want this now we never have really decided which direction the sunlight's coming in and I think I want it coming in this direction so this side of the mountain is going to be a little darker so I'm going to darken this one up just a little bit on this side even though a lot of this is going to be covered by the clouds when I work on the clouds again okay Got a little bit of an interruption there with a family member walking in to the studio, but hey, that's the real world out there when you're painting. You got to work around family members, people that want to drop by the front door, you whatever. So again, I'm going back and I'm going to darken up this side of the mountain just a little bit. Kind of more gray tones in this area. I'm trying to get rid of a little bit of that brown so it doesn't quite show through so strong. Notice also the size of my brush and how you don't see me taking a lot of effort, and maybe you disagree with that, but you don't see a lot of effort to be re-detailed. That's not what I'm doing here. This is I'm trying to capture the colors and what's going on in these mountains. Now down here in the valley, it's gonna be a little darker on this mountain. So I'm darkening it up a little bit. Again, the, uh, the clouds are going to be coming down in here later. Mountains are not smooth little pyramids. They're all kinds of little rocks and stuff, so you got to make sure you stick some of that in there. This is the dark side, so I don't want to get too far down in there, but because this will be a shadowed area, but it does have texture that I need to reflect. Okay, and this mountain coming all the way up into here a little bit, it'll help emphasize the eagle head, kind of separate it from everything else. I really uh, like that a little better than what I had it before. Break up the edge a little bit. Make it more realistic. Notice light, mid-tones, and eventually this is all gonna be your dark tones. Again, uh, this is more cool with lots of blue in it, and this is a warmer tone. And really, when I get into the grass down here, you'll probably see more reds, more warm colors showing up that'll again bring the um, base back forward to you. Now down in this little area here I don't I don't like this extra area stuck in here that doesn't look quite natural. Of course I'm second guessing mother nature now so maybe that's not right either so all right so but I do want my colors to be right. And I want to lighten those up a little bit. And it does come across as a shadowed area here. So I'm gonna break that. Now this one here is actually further back but I need to reflect the shadows a little bit, so I'm going to come down through here, darken it just a little bit. Again, it's your canvas. You can do what you want, and, and that 
that's really what makes art so special. There's so many little things you can do with. Now, with the four mountains, I, again, I want to get into the greens and the trees and stuff, so I'm going to wait a little bit on those. I do want to work a little more on these mountains in the back. And what I'm going to do is use a little dagger brush so I can kind of change from broad to narrow wherever I am and highlight some of the snow areas. So there's some pretty significant snow coming down through here. So I'm just basically kind of creating little snow areas. Again, it emphasizes and notice I'm kind of blending it into the paint that's already there because I don't want it too bright because this is on the shadow side. Right, little plateau up here that I'm thinking I'd like to emphasize, so I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. It's right up on top, but I don't want that to interfere too much with my eagle's head either, so I've got to be careful with that. some of this I can come back in again just before I finish up add more details to these mountains if I want to again it's just a process of constantly checking and saying hey am I happy with that and coming back and forth Okay, a lot more texture and they're lighter than they were before. Uh, this little area right in here is still a little dark, so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. And why am I lightening it? Basically for two reasons. One, to make sure the uh, viewer's eyes is not concentrated on that I want them to be looking at that eagle and the mountains are background so I don't want to get too much into dark tones back here in the mountains plus the depth the mountains are further back these mountains are This area, there's a little bit. I want to break this edge up a little bit, kind of telling everybody there's some trees back in there, so you can kind of see that the trees are poking up above the edge of that mountain. Now, over on this side, I want to do something similar. Again, dark side here. I need to darken it up just a little bit. It's facing away from the sun. Now 
I definitely will be coming back to the mountains uh, before I finish up. But for right now, I'm just trying to make sure I get all my lines and definitely my tones and warm and cold colors in the proper areas so that my depth is not lost. It's one of the dramatic things about this painting or the scene uh, where this eagle lives is obviously the mountains and the high peaks and things like that. So we want to make sure they're all showing up right. So I think I'm pretty good now with the background. Definitely lighten it up quite a bit. And now I'm thinking I'll move forward a little bit with the trees and the Ford Mountains. Now here I can go back a little bit with some warmer tones again. And since this is going to be tree lined, I'm going to basically begin to create some little tree tops up here because it's not going to be even, but they're also closer to the viewer. So you're gonna be able to see it. And I'm creating some texture here it's going to emphasize that the trees are sitting in there. Oh, this is nothing more than a little bit of titanium white mixed with some of that raw umber again. I'm just creating a little tone, some texture to that forest area behind. Now I'm going to come back in and add some greens at this type of thing. Now over on this side, on the left side of the painting, Pretty much the same thing. Again, I'm not, I gotta think a little bit more about this area in here, cause I may leave it more green, but it will definitely have a, kind of a tree line character setting up here above. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little of the texture that I need to create to make it look like there's trees back in there. Now this is pretty light, what I'm doing right now, which is probably not the right color. Again, I can make some changes. Add some darker tones in here. Forest has many, many, many colors. Trees at different ages, different condition as far as growing times, and so that all the uh, trees are not going to be the same. Now, going back up here a little higher, I'm going to kind of skip a couple areas here just to create the texture that I want. But at the same time, realize I'm going to come back and do some more stuff with the, the bank here. Do I want to leave it more of a rocky slide or put in trees? and go from there. So way back up here, I like to have some of these trees showing up. They're right there at the peak. Add a little drama up here. And it also breaks up these really hard lines that I don't want. So now I've kind of broke things up a little bit and I'm going to stop again right here in this and I'll come back here in a few minutes and start on the what I'd like to do right in this area and I'm just going to take time drink a cup of coffee or something think about it and maybe come back to it. Okay, now I'm going to start working on those mountains up front a little bit. Now, one of the questions I had is just, do I want to leave them rocky or do I want to make some sort of um, forest area? You know, we talked about this area over in here and also this tree line going up in here. So I think I'm going to do kind of a combination. I'm going to create trees down in this lower area, kind of a rock slide in here, 
and maybe continue the rock slide in there because this is a glacial valley and if you're familiar with a lot of glacial valleys, the remnants of the glacier leaves lots of rocks behind and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go back over here and add just a little bit of the green tone here. Now all this is is trying to get my tones and my values back over. Notice it is dark. And I'm just kind of going around different areas to kind of emphasize that, hey, it is a tree area. And it adds a lot of color to the foreground here. Another thing I'm thinking about is on this eagle, whether I want to put white tail feathers on it. Just, it's really a difference between juvenile eagles and um, adults. I like that white tail feather though, but that's a decision I'm gonna make here in a little bit. So I'm gonna come down here with basically the same green tones. Kind of create myself a little bit of a forest area coming down through here. Now, I'm not being real precise because again, I've got dark light tones going in. There's gonna be some dark green areas. There's gonna be some areas that are almost dark. I mean, uh, black and tone. So I'm going to come all the way down through here. Now this white area that I wanted to have the uh, glacier in is going to be a focal point if I don't be careful with it. And I'd still like to make sure the eagle is the main thing. So I think I'm going to begin to darken this up a little bit to kind of get it out of there. Tree line goes down through here. A little bit of thallo blue sitting in there with the yellow lemon. Because again, trees change colors, especially in the fall. That's when it's really beautiful to go out there and look at trees. And I'm gonna bring that on down through here. Now I can correct this tree stump under here and the eagle's legs. As soon as I get all the background in the way I want it. Kind of darken this up a little bit because it is in the valley. Now this area back in here, I think it's all gonna be covered by feathers off this eagle, so I'm not really worried about that right now. Then I come down and through here, there might be a little bit of green showing up here and there. Various plants trying to break through. Uh, back up in here, there might be, again, some sort little bit of activity on the trees back up in here. So we've added a lot of color right through there. Now this thallow blue is really showing through, but right now I'm really not too concerned about that. Again, like I said, I think a lot of those eagle feathers are going to be covering all of that up. So now I want to look at my rock fall here. And basically what I'm doing is adding a little bit of lemon yellow to my raw umber and then bringing it all down, lightening it up. And what I end up with is kind of a, almost a gray tone that reflects this. So I'm going back up here and it is a rock uh, edge Lots of, uh, you know, effects of water running down the side as the snow melts, that kind of thing. So it's not even. And it'll come down through here. Now, because this is the forefront here, details begin to show up a little bit. Now, I'm not really too concerned about getting precise yet, but they are going to be 
brighter colors, easier to see down in this low area. So it comes down through here. These are the light tones going in. And then I'll darken it back up. I'm kind of exploring the colors here to see what it looks like. This is, you know, the sun is coming down through here, so this is going to be a little lighter area because the sun is shining on it and the rocks forming different little crags and maybe some little cliff tops and that kind of thing down through there. Trees breaking through out of water. I'm going to like the looks of that. Now you're going to have some shadow areas right in here because the sunlight coming down hits the trees. So there's going to be shadow areas in here. So those are going to be darker. So I'm going to come back in there. And in this particular case, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of the raw umber to my ultramarine blue and lemon yellow mix. And I'm going to come down through here and just basically begin to create my little shadow areas here. Notice how right off they begin to show up better. And I'm going down through here right now. I'm not really trying to do the trees. I'm just knocking in the, sh the shadows. Okay. It's an interesting little rock slide right there. And I mean, they're not the easiest things in the world to paint, but at the same time, they're very interesting. Okay, you gotta blend these lines right here, because, you know, anytime you go out in the forest, there's no nice straight lines. It's vegetation and plants and all kinds of things kind of breaks the lines up. So, so it allows me to do a little more shadowing here on the back side. There's like a little cliff in this area. And this is your rock face coming down to there. Starting to break up my colors in here, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. I mean, I spent a lot of time details are in this area, and I might change my mind. So. That edge and the edge of the woods right there is still not dark enough. to be dark.
think you can start seeing the pine trees coming in there. And we'll come back in and do more detail on these. Right now, I'm just kind of, again, looking at tones and overall composition of the painting. edge there. I want a soft edge down through there. And this area needs to be dark enough, so I'm going to do it. Again. This is down in the valley behind the eagle. As I said before, I don't think this is going to show anyhow because of the feathers and stuff when we get in those details. But I'll go ahead and darken it up a little bit. So this dagger brush is really handy for is you can put little trees everywhere if you want to. And we'll come back in and detail it. But right now what I'm looking at and need to think about is again, do I have my depth perception back the way I want? Going from the light, mid-tones, darker tones, now green is a cool color, but as we move into the stump and the rocks and the grass below will get warmer. So that's gonna pull all of this forward. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop there to let the trees and the mountains kind of dry again. Um, so I don't mix too much of the paint when I start the foreground and the grasses. So until then, um, if you enjoyed this part of the video, if you would please um, subscribe. And if you liked it, click like, and please follow along as we move into video four, where we will begin to work on the bottom. And then probably in video five, because the bottom is gonna take a little bit of time to get the grass and that kind of stuff and the stump and whatever. Then in probably video five, we will work on the eagle and hopefully we'll be coming pretty close to finish up this wall painting. So until then, you have a blessed day and continue the adventure and practice, practice, practice. Catch you later.